heat soak I was talking about right here this is how I found out that it's blowing hot air see right now it's 80 degrees yeah Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Sagitnet 2. Little bit of an update on the G23BK, getting it boosted. I got the exhaust manifold and the turbo all set up. It's not ready to roll yet. But before I put these two together, I have to do something about the uh, exhaust flange. If you have seen the uh, episode where I was making this manifold, the part where I was using aluminum bar to check the flatness on the flange, to make sure I didn't uh, cook this thing. Ah, it's all right. A little bit of the center but gasket will fix it I guess I found out that it was like rocking I didn't pay attention to it right away it's because of I have a lot of things that I need to do now the time comes and I said man I think I better do something about that flange otherwise it will create some uh, headache for me as soon as everything is put on together exhaust leak which in turn, it will uh, mess up my O2 sensor and all, and also it will create some weird sound. Plus, I don't want to find out that this thing is all black and everything. Anyway, so I went and got me a, a belt sander. I'm not bringing this product down or anything like that, but uh, when I was using it, uh, yeah, it was like, yeah it's okay for a small little job like something like this where you are making some cut and you just want to make it flat or something like that but for some big job like this one here where I have to make sure that the flange is all flat and I was really getting down and dirty with it I was able to uh, make that motor to stop so i was literally backing down when i was laying this uh manifold on it yeah it took me hours just to get it flat and everything but it does the job don't get me wrong but for some that are expecting a lot yeah it just didn't cut it for me I'm going to keep it still. It's because of, you know, sometimes I have these small little jobs that I need to shave or something. I will find out later on. It's because of, pardon the mess on the shop. Well, in the beginning, I was making my own, like a 45 degree. And this will go somewhere like here, like so. And when I have the... Uh, The inlet housing with that long snout on it, everything looks perfect and I got a silicone instead. I said, man, this will make my uh, life a whole lot easier, right? But uh, I learned to find out that it's not, it didn't quite lined up at this end. So I was forced to remove the inlet housing which is right here and I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna cut it here see this line and I'm going to shift it it's because of this one is too close to that fitting right there the silicone is touching the uh, the fitting and with the vibration and everything and I'm afraid that it might cut through and there goes my boost <laughs> so uh that's more like the project today 
I'm gonna cut this and re-weld it somehow but I think using this silicone will be uh, all right for now yeah I'm not really going to that uh, crazy uh, uh, boost pressure and all that yeah not even probably maybe 18 psi or something I think this should be all right for now job like this it's okay but something bigger than this one yeah it's not good I'm just making sure everything is flat You hear the changes of the motor? <laughs> mm -hmm. I just have to ease down on it. Other than that, it'll work. Yeah, I just need to turn it regionally it was like that that line but I'm going to test it out first make sure I'm gonna clean this up and then uh, re weld it back welded and everything aim it in the right direction so this is how much gap about three inches I think this should be enough to cover it I'm gonna cut this in length I think it also makes it good for flexibility so whenever that engine moves The heat soaking that I was talking about. This is how I found out that the uh, the pipes, when it gets hot, even though there's cold air passing through it, the air is getting hot. It's just picking up all that heat transfer. The aluminum is transferring that heat 78 degrees. It's pushing 80 ambient temperature. And I'm gonna poke this inside with the air blowing right because i got it all from the cooling fan and check this out 
see it goes up. I think it's hot. So right now it's almost 90 degree. It's pushing 90 degree. My hand is shaking so much. <laughs> it's almost 94. Yeah. And let's check how much the uh, temperature of the air being pushed through. See it's going down. Right now it's less than 90, 88. It's going down. It's 80 degrees. Yeah, 80 degrees. Yeah. I'm not touching the pipe or anything like that. The probe is just right on the uh, against the air. Now it's pushing 82. It goes up. It's going up. Almost 84. Yeah. So imagine if I have that intercooler charge piping without heat wrap on there. And whatever the uh, front mount intercooler sends, let's say that the uh, front mount intercooler is working perfectly. It's doing its job. It's cooling that air. And without any protection on the aluminum pipes and when the fan kicks in, getting all that heat from the radiator, what, like 210 degrees, something like that, normal temperature, even though it's cold air passing through, air is just carrying all that heat on the air intake. Remember uh, last episode I have mentioned something about the uh, inlet air temperature. It has to be below 120 degrees. The denser the air, the more power the engine will make. I'll do more testing on this one. I will do a uh, before and after without the uh, anything on it and after. Yeah, you'll be surprised. Anyway, I'm almost done uh, welding this one. Got it all cleaned up. It's ready for a Cerakote. I will apply some Cerakote on it. Not bad. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all for watching and uh, make sure to uh, hit that like button and I'll see you guys on the next. All right. Bye everyone.